This is the latest photo I took with my parents, and it was four years ago. My parents may look young, and yeah, that's why I look young. <laughs> they are already in their late 60s now. While I am standing next to you, their only child is 7,000 miles away from them. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, the time and cost to travel between the US and China has become entirely unaffordable. I am left feeling desperate for any information about my parents' health and well-being. I have probably purchased almost every smartwatch and health monitoring wearable for my parents. <laughs> While they may have fancy apps and may claim to measure almost everything, they all managed to end up in one unassuming cardboard box, which my parents said they may still be able to find if they look hard enough. <laughs> the truth is, state-of-the-art wearables cannot measure vitals well enough for medical diagnosis or even to professionally advise our daily activities. That is because our body is a very complex system that cannot be represented by information collected solely from our wrist. Just like we cannot say our car is in a perfect condition if it only has sensors in its tires. Our body constantly emits electrical, mechanical, thermal, and biochemical signals from head to toe about our health, status, intentions, and emotions. For example, Electrocardiogram, or ECG, is the electrical signal from our heart, and it can be measured by conductive electrodes attached to the chest. Put fingers on our chest, we can feel our heart pumping, and the mechanical vibration sensed by our finger is called seismocardiogram, or SCG. When under mental stress, our palms sweat, which can be indicated by the electrodermal activity from our palms. I can tell you that my palms are quite damp right now as I am speaking to you. <laughs> the more data we can collect from our body, the more precise we can build a digital twin of our body in cyberspace, which will open the door to revolutionizing our future in mobile health, personalized medicine, human-robot interface, and even metaverse. Imagine a future where medical examinations can be conducted in the comfort of our own homes with personalized treatment plans formed immediately without long wait for medical appointment or hospital trips. Also imagine a future personal robotic assistant can immediately understand us through just eye contacts or hand gestures without typing or speaking. The question is, why don't we already have wearables that can measure vitals or biometrics from any part of our body with medical grade precision and long-term comfort? Why we can already wear computers on our wrist, but not medical sensors in our everyday life? Well, that is because of a fundamental challenge in material science. Electronics are rigid and planar, but our body is soft and curvy. These two just don't like to stick to each other. As a result, there are only limited parts of our body, such as the wrist or the fingers, where we can strap or clip rigid pieces of electronics, such as smartwatches or oximeters. The interfaces formed by those rigid devices and our skin are loose and floppy. Therefore, the signals are inaccurate or even suffer from bigger noises when the wearer is under active motion. To achieve an intimate but non-invasive interface with our skin, there's nothing better than a temporary tattoo sticker. The interfaces formed by those rigid devices and our skin are loose and floppy. Therefore, the signals are inaccurate or even suffer from bigger noises when the wearer is under active motion. To achieve an intimate but non-invasive interface with our skin, there's nothing better than a temporary tattoo sticker. The sticker should be soft, thin, lightweight, 
well conformed to our skin, unobstructive to motion, and can be easily peeled off when we are done with our measurement. As a mechanical engineer by training, I start to question whether it is possible to transform conventionally rigid and planar electronics into the form factor of a temporary tattoo sticker. Well, we know that 3D compression springs are stretchable and compressible even if they are made out of intrinsically stiff metals. Following this inspiration, if we cut a piece of aluminum foil into a meandering ribbon, like a 2D spring, it would become a stretchable conductor. In the lab, my coworkers and I have replaced the aluminum foil by silicon and gold nanomembranes and scaled it down by 100 times to create a sensing circuit that is as soft and stretchy as our skin. When placed on our skin, the circuit behaves like a secondary epidermis without causing any mechanical perception. We named this invention epidermal electronics, or simply e-tattoos. Through our first invention, there has been an ever-growing community of researchers working on e-tattoos. With our collective efforts, now e-tattoos are capable of electrical, mechanical, thermal, and biochemical sensing from our skins, as well as signal processing and wireless data transmission. In the future, we hope that we would be able to apply e-tattoos for health monitoring and human-robot interfaces. Today, I will give you one example in each of the two categories from our lab. Heart disease is the deadliest disease in the US, claiming the lives of nearly 700,000 people each year and accounting for one in every five deaths. Additionally, 20% of heart attacks are considered silent, meaning that the damage is done, but we don't even know it. However, there is hope, as 80% of heart disease and stroke are preventable if early diagnosis and preemptive interventions can be made. The heart is the engine of our body as it pumps blood to supply oxygen and nutrition to all of our organs. Some of us may have this experience that we clearly felt some heart palpitation one night, but when we finally go to the hospital, all the measurements turn out to be normal. When you visit a cardiologist for heart discomfort, you will first be greeted by a very kind nurse who will put a bunch of electrodes and wires on your chest to perform electrocardiography, or ECG. An hour later, when your very busy cardiologist finally shows up, instead of listening to you, they would listen to your heart, I mean literally, using a stethoscope. However, a stethoscope only works when your cardiologist presses it on your chest and listens to it. Now, the mechanical vibration of our chest due to heartbeat can be measured by a mechanical vibration sensor as a tattoo attached on your chest. Because it is already on your chest, the tattoo can also house ECG electrodes. With synchronous ECG and SCG measurement, we can extract a variety of critical cardiac time intervals, which are strong indicators of heart diseases such as hypertension or congestive heart failure. Our latest wireless ECG SCG chest e tattoo is ultra thin ultra-soft, conforms to the contours of the chest, and only weighs 2.5 grams, the same weight as a penny. Therefore, it is imperceptible to wear and provides the highest signal quality. Additionally, it only consumes 3 milliwatt of power, which allows a coin cell battery to run nonstop for 40 hours. This video shows how the e-tattoo is streaming data wirelessly to a cell phone through Bluetooth on an Android app we developed. 
when the subject started walking, you can see that the bottom red ECG signal stays very stable even under motion, and the three axis SCG signals are picking up the motion as they are supposed to be. Through advanced algorithms, we can extract a variety of cardiac time intervals at home and provide a plethora of data for the early detection of cardiovascular diseases. The signals from our body have way broader applications than just health tracking. When fed to computers and robots, these signals allow the machines to better understand and interact with us. Let me give you one example of how e-tattoos are used as human-machine interface. Although people wear conventional tattoos all over their body, we rarely see anyone wear tattoos on their face, right? Why is that? Because it's weird and scary. <laughs> However, if we want to measure signals from our face, such as eye movement or facial expression, my lab has created a nanometer thing, semi-transparent graphene e tattoo, which is nearly invisible. Graphene is an incredibly thin material which is made up of a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb lattice. Providing it with electrical conductivity, optical transparency, and mechanical strength. When applying the, chest, uh, the graphene e tattoo on our skin, we have a process to prototype the graphene e tattoo on conventional on commercial uh, temporary tattoo paper. By smearing some water on the back of the paper, we can transfer the graphene e tattoo exactly like the uh, temporary tattoo sticker. When applied on skin, you can see that the graphene e tattoo is really, looks really transparent and uh, well conformed to the finest textures of our skin, enabling high fidelity electrophysiological sensing without being noticed by anyone. By applying this nearly invisible graphene e tattoo around the human eyes, we can measure the eye movement induced surface electrical potential called the electrooculogram or EOG. The EOG signals can be wirelessly streamed to a laptop where they are interpreted and converted into signals to control the flying direction of a drone, which is a flying robot. This video demonstrates that without hand control, the drone flies up when the person looks up or flies to the right when he looks to the right. But you cannot see anything from his face. Therefore, graphing e tattoo is really a mechanically and optically imperceptible human robot interface. This technology has potential applications in virtual reality, gaming, or even security. I have talked about how soft and conformable e-tattoos can sense signals from our body for various applications, including health monitoring and human-robot interaction. We can apply the same underlying technology to develop soft and conformable sensors for robots, allowing them to sense touch and temperature just like human skin. These smart stickers for robot to wear are called e-skins. Thank you, e-skins. Currently, robotic fingers are rigid and not sensitive to touch. Therefore, they do not know how much force they are using to touch us or shake our hands, which can pose real danger when they are physically interacting with us. In July of 2022, a chess-playing robot grabbed and broke a seven-year-old boy's finger because it only had computer vision and no touch-sensing fingers when the boy made an unexpected move. If the robot had soft fingers and touch-sensitive e-skins, such tragedy would never have happened. To address this issue, my lab developed a stretchable e-skin that can be attached to an inflatable probe, 
Upon inflation, the probe bulges up and behaves like a smart fingertip that can make very precise and gentle touch on our wrist to check our radio pulses, just like a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. The soft and around the nature of this probe is very safe and forgiving, even if the human suddenly moves. The relationship between human and robots have undergone a major transformation. In the past, they seem to have opposite characteristics, and the communications between them were limited to screens and sounds. However, we're in the midst of a major shift. Humans are becoming more digital and connected to the internet, whereas robots are becoming more intelligent and physically soft. Looking to the future, we will apply e-tattoos to digitize human body such that robots can better understand our health, status, intentions, and emotions. We will also apply e-skins on soft robotic fingers such that they can safely touch or hug us. <laughs> By 2030, we will face a global workforce crisis due to our rapidly aging society. There is an urgent need to develop first aid, nursing, or babysitting robots. It would be a great comfort to me if one day my parents could be accompanied by a very safe and intelligent nursing robot with the computational and physical power to provide care well beyond my capabilities while not keeping any secrets from me about my parents' house. <laughs> Let me acknowledge my amazing research group at UT Austin. For those of you who are here, please feel free to wave your hands. And those are the people. <laughs> Thank you. And those are the people who shouted e-skin just for your reference. <laughs> and I am also deeply grateful for all the sponsors who have generously supported my research. Thank you. <laughs>